can't believe you two took that raving lunatic seriously. What do you think this is? <laughs> What's coming up down the road and very quickly is the Harry Potter cloak. What is it? With that fictional cloak, Harry isn't just camouflage, he's invisible. My body's gone. How invisible are we talking here? If I walked into a room with a soldier wearing one of these cloaks? You wouldn't see him at all. Uh, he would be completely invisible to you. This isn't make-believe. The military has seen the so-called quantum stealth technology. It works by bending the light around an object, even concealing most of a person's shadow. Imagine what that could do for a sniper hiding in a field, or the American pilots who ejected over Libya when their fighter jets crashed last year. They could actually pull out uh, very similar to what they carry with a survival blanket, throw it over top of them, and unless you walked right into them, you wouldn't know that they were there. So what was once firmly in the world of make-believe could quickly become quite real. The science is in the special fabric, so you don't need a power source or some instruction manual to make it work. Theoretically, any soldier, even in the most remote location, could quickly put it on and get it working. Hi everyone, for lack of knowledge. And today I want to address another strange science topic. But I'm going to do things a little different today, and I'm going to put forth a theory that puts a spiritual twist to it as well. It's a theory I've had for quite a while, and I want to share it with you guys and bounce it off of you to get some feedback about it. Now, metamaterials are very, very unique, and they're something that surprisingly have been around for a long time. You guys may have heard of some things in the news about, you know, invisibility cloaks nowadays, uh, it puts you in the mind of the Harry Potter invisibility cloak or even earlier, the Predator movies and how these Predator beings have uh, metamaterials that can bend light waves around them. So this is really exciting stuff. But a form or another of it has been around for a very long time. If you look at stealth technology, you look at stealth planes, stealth helicopter and even stealth ships and other crafts they are using a form of metamaterial because these materials that they're made of and the properties that they have bend electromagnetic waves. They just focus on bending microwaves or radar waves so that it appears invisible in that spectrum. Now, when it really gets amazing is now we've gotten advanced to the point that they are bending electromagnetic waves that are in the visible light spectrum, making things invisible to our eyes so we can't see them. Now, I want to read just a quick little excerpt about metamaterials and then I'll just finish up. A metamaterial is a material that's engineered to have properties that are not readily found in nature. They're made from multiple elements such as metals or plastics, ceramics as well, but these materials are usually arranged in repeating patterns at scales that are smaller than the wavelengths of the phenomenon they're trying to influence. Metamaterials derive their properties not from the properties of the base materials, but from the structures themselves. Their precise shape, geometry, size, and orientation gives them their smart properties that are capable of manipulating electromagnetic waves. Now, they do this by blocking, absorbing, enhancing, or bending the waves to achieve benefits that go well beyond what's possible in nature. Appropriately designed metamaterials can affect electromagnetic radiation or even sound in a manner that's not observed in bulk materials. Those that exhibit a negative index of refraction for particular wavelengths have attracted significant research. These materials are known as negative index metamaterials. All right, I'll just end there. But uh, they addressed certain agencies as well that have been interested in this. DARPA is the main one in America. And, you know, DARPA is our agency that develops advanced defense equipment. 
So they've been the one in America that's been putting a lot of interest and uh, money into this type of research. I know Britain, some years back, I saw they had a tank that they were showcasing. And this was on CNN, you know, your evening news, where they claimed to have made it invisible and that it was uh, displayed for some of their allies, some of their top generals. So this stuff has been around for a while and it's surprising how open they are with it. It's interesting because we know our military, by the time that this information leaks to the mainstream news and they always claim that, oh, well, we're, you know, 20 years away from being able to do such and such. But it's on your mainstream news for, you know, terrorists, uh, enemy nations, whoever it may be, to even think about the idea of this type of advancement. So this is stuff that they've been doing and using in the field for a long time by the time it makes it to your mainstream media. So and they've already developed ways to counter it. I'm pretty sure they've gotten stuff that's more advanced than that now, but it's still secret because it's almost like they don't even care about the technology anymore. This is just junk for civilian consumption is what they're thinking. But anyway, um, really what I wanted to bounce off of you guys comes from some articles I've read and some documentaries I've seen. And it started when one time I saw some researchers that were going into the jungles of Central and South America and how they noted that there were certain tribes that they would never leave the camp at night. And these tribes, people would tell them that they never left their camp at night because at particular times there were certain beings that would be out in the woods or in the jungles and that these beings were invisible. So they were very hard to see and interact with. And so they were fearful of them. Now, this is in the real world, and that really puts you in mind of the predator. I just mentioned that earlier. The predator, uh, it's almost like they took that idea from some peoples that really did live in Central and South America. So this made me think about it even deeper. And if you go throughout history, we've had ghosts, poltergeists, and other things of that nature from modern day all the way back to ancient day. Even in the modern day now, we have what people claim to be aliens, but that's another topic altogether. I'll just call them aliens for now. But that people that interact with these beings or claim to have been abducted or, you know, consult with these creatures, they even claim that they can become invisible whenever they like. So this leads me to the theory that many things we interact with are technological in nature. Even things that we would assume are supernatural or spiritual is just because we're dealing with beings, and I'll go ahead and say it, fallen angels that have been around for longer than us. And as scripture states, we were created a little lower than. So we know that we have to depend on God for, for all things, for protection, for life itself. But in combating these enemies, we have to call on the name of Jesus. We have no strength in ourselves to combat our enemy. So when you tie all this stuff together, they're just very advanced beings. And so I'm not saying that we necessarily got this technology from interacting with these beings, even though that's a possibility. We know that, you know, the serpent tempted us with knowledge from the very beginning in the garden. That was the point. He said, you'll just have knowledge of good and evil. And this gnosis false gnosis, spiritual knowledge is something he's been feeding us ever since in the occult and in dark arts. Um, and so that's interesting as well. But not necessarily we got this from demons, but it just puts you in the mind of seeing things in a new light. I remember a quote a long time ago, and it stated that a sufficiently advanced society would appear to use magic to a primitive society. So if we took some of the stuff we have now and went back two, three thousand years, they would really see it as magic or supernatural. And so if you look at beings that we would call ghosts, aliens, poltergeists, whatever it may be, even these beings that these people in the jungles claim uh, live out there. And these are people that don't lie. You know, they don't they some some of these cultures don't even have a word uh, that means lying. So they have no incentive. They're not getting anything out of making certain things up. And it was just observed by these researchers that it's part of their culture. Uh, you know, so the whole tribe doesn't just 
say, hey, we're going to lie and act different now because these researchers are here. But anyway, like I stated, you tie all this stuff together and it just gets very, very interesting. Very interesting. I believe many things that we believe are supernatural is just because we don't have the understanding of it yet. We don't fully grasp the science behind it. And we're really now getting to the point that we're at the threshold with this strange science of a lot of things that would seem like magic or supernatural. We're coming into more knowledge Things that other beings may have been using for a long time, just at a technological level. And we've always perceived it as being spiritual. So I just thought this was all some interesting stuff. Good things to look at and mull over. Give me some feedback on my theories. Tell me what you think about it. You guys have a very, very blessed day. Take care of yourself. I'll talk to you next time. And let's not be destroyed for lack of knowledge.